Hello, this is Tofan Trifle Productions with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can create uh, massive highways and streets with animated vehicles in Blender fairly easily by using the Roads Must Roll add on. Yes, that's right. The Roads Must Roll add on. It's a long, strange name, but that's the name of the add on. Uh, it's not free, and the price is somewhat high. For a single user, for portfolio uh, purposes, it's $64.99. For a small studio, which consists of two uh, users, and both the portfolio and the small studio, they have the full version for both, with the free uh, future updates. For the studio version, is $249. Uh, for the commercial use, which contains a studio of six users, once again, all the features are included uh, with uh, free future updates. That's $499. Yes, it's high, but when it comes to uh, creating roads and highways with animated vehicles, I've done that before from scratch, it takes some time. And sometimes the results you get aren't what you're looking for, so you have to redo it again. But with this add-on, it makes it fairly easy to get that done fairly quickly. Now, this works in Blender 4.4, or 4.1 at rather, to 4.4. I'm using 4.1 myself. Uh, this renders an even in cycles, and I'll just showcase it in cycles because cycles looks better. And I'll leave a link available below the video so you guys can download yourselves and check it out. Uh, the installation process is fairly different. Uh, but once you've downloaded it onto your system, you have to unzip it, which I've already done here. I'm going to left click right click copy to copy that address there then I'm going to go to edit and then preferences and then go to file pass and click on the plus sign it'll give you an option for installing a file path into blender and down here uh, this will be blank for you guys since you never downloaded it before click on that icon left click in here press ctrl v to paste that address and then press enter it'll direct you to your folder that you've uh, that the add-on is in, the asset browser, or the asset files are in, and then click on accept. And then it'll give you the file path there. You can click on this uh, burger widget to save preferences, but usually when automatic save is activated, it automatically save it in Blender. And we're going to set up our scene here. I'm going to click on the world icon, left click on the color tab, uh, make this brighter bluish color that's my preference I'm going to click on the uh, light source there click on the uh, that icon turn it to Sun uh, turn it to a yellowish color click on the color tab uh, that's high enough click on yellow and the strength let's put it down to 5 enter I'm going to change my render viewport to cycles click on cycles if you have a strong enough uh, graphics card, turn the CPU to GPU to make it run faster. And our sample should be at 128 because that's all we need. And I'm going to left click and drag the viewport here. Click on that uh, cube there and delete that. Uh, click on my sun source, move gizmo. I'm going to drag this up a little bit to be above the highway. And I'm going to click on that icon there. And I'm going to go to the asset browser. And to divide your scene there, whenever you have your mouse over a corner in Blender, when it turns from a pointer arrow to a crosshairs, just left click and drag it over to split up your window. I'm drag this over a little bit more. Click on that uh, option there. Go to the rows must roll. And here we are. And the great thing about this add-on also, everything in here is drag and drop. Everything is from top to bottom. But keep in mind that with these cars, these are not animated, so these are going to be stationary. So if you want them animated, you have to animate them yourself. These cars here are animated, so these will actually animate inside of Blender. So we're going to start off and actually stick with the first option, here, which is this uh, road here. Left click and drag this into my scene. And we're going to give it a bit of time, a little bit of time to populate our scene here. And it usually doesn't take that long, maybe about 30 seconds or so. so. Let's just give it some time. A little bit more time. 
and it takes this long because this is a lot that's trying to add to the scene. It's adding the road. You know, if you have trees in that scene, it's adding trees to it for this preset here. Signs, you know, textures and everything. And here we go. Here we go. And, and this everything is quality coordinated. And we press play on our keyboard. It all plays. Now, right now, it's running at eight frames per second. Uh, when it's animated, it'll run faster than this because Blender is set to 24 frames per second by default. So it'll be faster than this. But you can see that everything is color coordinated uh, in this scene here, the way this uh, is laid out. Now we're going to change our viewport to see what it looks like textured. Left click on that. And give that a little bit of time to propagate also so we can see what the cars look like. And there we go. Now I'm going to go back to the other render view here so you can, I can show you how to edit uh, the scene in terms of making the road longer. So with your road selected, just press tab on your keyboard. And as you can see, it's just a busier curve. It's got points on it, points all through. Now if you want to make this longer, just click on the points in any of these points. It's better to click on a point that's on the edge to make it longer. And press E on your keyboard to extrude and left click to confirm that. Uh, left click on our move gizmo and then from that point you just left click on the Y axis left click and drag on the Y axis and on the X axis if you want to and that extends our street there and then you press tab again to get out of edit mode and that's how you can extend your streets now if we zoom in to a vehicle here let's zoom into this bus and we left click on our uh, we click on the render the render settings here back to cycles let's give it some time to, to render there it's low poly right now and to get more parameters to adjust you just left click on the wrench here and all your parameters are here and it's a ton of parameters that's why this is just an intro to the add-on not an in-depth uh, review let's uh, extend our window here join areas left click left click to extend this now this is low poly now, if you want to have a scene where you're just like above, you know, a cityscape looking down for like a drone or a helicopter or a plane, this would work. Because in Blender, uh, the size in terms of the number of polygons on your models and the size and detail of your textures affect the rendering speed of your scene. So right now, it will render fairly quickly. But if you want to get a close-up view of our vehicles here, let me get a nice shot of the scene here of a vehicle. All you have to do is click on performance, click on high poly cars, then go here. You can see it's already started to change the view of the high poly vehicles. Now we have transparency in the windows and everything doesn't look as rigid or as boxy as it as it looked before in low low poly mode and if you want more resolution to your scene just go here it has three options low resolution high resolution and super high resolution so yeah it has that there and it works great another thing i want to feature or showcase here is that you can actually change the way the signs look here because right now I don't know what language this is, but it's definitely not English. Uh, so we can scroll down to overhead signs, left click on that. And we can change the language. Right now it's in Astopia. I don't know which region that is, but what's up the, to the Astopians. And we can turn it to Europe. It changes. And we can change it to the United States. And that also changes to the streets that we're used to. Uh, the highway signs that we're used to in the states. Uh, it's got all these options. Why I say it's just an intro because it's got so many options, so many parameters to change. And another thing I would like to showcase before I end the tutorial is that right now the scene is pretty much daytime. So let's change this to nighttime. Let's just click on our worldview, click on color, and then pull this down to make it darker. And let's click on our sun. Is it still trying to propagate? Where's our sun here? Sun, sun well, I guess, I guess the sun is fine. But let's uh, change this to, if you have a nighttime scene, you want to have lights 
uh, show and the lamps on the cars. Let's go back to our settings and let's all you have to do is click on this lights on, left click on that. And that turns on your lights. It not only turns on the street lights, the street lamps, it turns on the lights on the vehicles. If we zoom into a vehicle here, you can see the lights, the stop lights or the rear lights are on. If we turn this off, the lights go off on the cars and on the lamps. Click up this to activate it again. It turns lights on on the light post and on the vehicles and including the headlights. Let me try to turn around so we can get a front view of some headlights here on some of these vehicles. Scroll in. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, let's let, let it clear up a little bit. Yeah, so yeah, this add-on it saves a lot of time, a lot of time. Like I said before, a lot of uh, parameters to change when it comes to the trees, the water, the sidewalk, lamp posts, a uh, sign post, side strips, parking lanes, medium strip, uh, the gap in the barriers, so on and so forth. It just goes on and on. So it's highly, highly, highly customizable. So even though it costs quite a bit of uh, moolah for what it can do and the amount of time it can save this is something that is very very useful and that's today's blender quick tip and if I get enough requests I'll just go up more in depth into the add-on but for right now just an introduction to it I hope you guys uh, have learned something from watching the tutorial and once again like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one all right adios